Hey guys, Flash Reduction. I'm mean, born in what? What are you doing here? Uh, what should you do for the fourth, not fourth, sixth anniversary of FNAF? Well, to make a review out of the game. Yeah, I had two concepts of what I was supposed to do for the fourth, the sixth anniversary. One, make about a history of FNAF, or with my history to be exact, because it was a wild ride though. And the second one, which was the final one of the book though, was having the plus special. Having. Song push right there, the GE song push in the office with a PNAF one animatronics attack, and there was a bunch more concepts talking about how I should have a mix between FNAF 1, 2, 3, 4, SL, maybe even uh, world 6, UCN, VR, AR to be exact though, and maybe a little concept of what it might have been. I know the game has released at the time making this. But maybe security breach. I know that game gets a bunch of leaks though, but still. Would have been nice to actually see what might come to the game. Anyways though, those were concerns about what I was supposed to do with the sex and investing. What do I say for? I don't know why. But eventually I decided to just review the first game out of the bunch. Now, what you may think, what is a FNAF to be exact? Well, it stands for, it stands for Five Nights at Freddy's. And sees you as a night guard wandering until 6 a.m. to see what has going on at night. But turns out these animatronics are possessive. Might even have children stuffed inside their suits for all eternity. And yes, the eternity thing was decided for obviously sequels. We're just talking about the first game. We ain't talking about no sequels. We're in the date of August 8th, 2014. But the backstory for now was kind of very much weird. You see, the creator of the FNAF series, Scott Carson, was a bit of in the pickle when before FNAF he made some games. Of course, they were okay though, but one basically broke everything apart and the reason why FNAF came into existence. Chip Ernstone's Co. It was basically just the uh, where's heck little wannabe tycoon 2D size club wannabe. But it got bashed with friggin' hate, let me tell you. It was telling that, well, obviously it's a dumb game, but one of them said that, why the heck does the characters look like, I know this isn't a very much accurate speech though, I'm just telling you, so why the heck are the animatronics of the characters looking all like Chuck E. Cheese animatronics? He did, Scott then made a few games though, and was at the point where he was thinking that he might stop making games. Until when the idea of that review he saw, and thinking about it, he thought, maybe I should try to scare them. So then he created a little thing called Five Nights at Freddy's, and the rest is history. Surprisingly enough, the debated versions of the game, we don't have, really have prototypes though. Was that the trailer? Yeah, Bonnie and I was running from one reason or another, but turned out to be Foxy. Yeah, I have no other reason why. And also, Freddy Bonnie Jack and Foxy, now including Yellow Bear, were nicknames actually. I should have said Freddy Bear though, but still. They're all nicknames until they're actually given full names, but you like those names so much that they actually kept with the characters, and thank god, who would have something different than the characters that we know and love with? And also, a bubble bunny decided to give him nightmares. For a long, long time. Yeah. And there's only like two characters who had prototype with beta names that said that it was obviously Freddy and Gordon Freddy. Freddy Bear was just supposed to be his name though. It was like in a game draw freaking description, I think. But then decided to do a Faz, which makes it more accurate. And going Freddy. Yeah, this is what a term of actually fan ideas. Not fan ideas though, but just fan made ideas. His name wasn't going Freddy, it was called Yellow Bear. Which, to be fair though, does make sense with Freddy Bear. I mean, they could have probably had Golden Freddy Bear. That's a dumb name. <laughs> but. It was due to the fact that in the custom now you put 20, uh, not 20, 1987 in one of the stuff and you get yourself the crash of Golden Freddy. To be exact though, yeah. It was around the time when FNAF 2 came that Scott decided to give him the name Golden Freddy. And yeah, that's really it. But the game is just like this, let me show you. You just move around, you click, you pull up a camera, see if the animatronics move, you have to have pinstripe accuracy of what the heck they are though. I do feel that AI, AI is pretty easy though. Bonnie is the one that gets the most repetitive, which makes sense. If you guys the next, Fonzie could be there. Freddy, obviously after the game's off of the stage. And going Freddy, just random. I mean, he's in the camp to be when he's a freaking poster. So, yeah. 
I mean, sure, the game was very much small, but due to the fact that it's a little a gimmick, it, it grew very fast, let me tell you. Big thing YouTubers had to play the little indie game, and it grew so much that it became very popular. And Bunny knew FNAF was a thing. Although FNAF, that name was actually called FNAF. We don't call it anymore, it's called FNAF. But there was a bunch of little things that crept in inside the game, like this one. There were a lot of that though, but there was a lot more to consider with this original game though. There was a bunch of freaking hidden secrets that people didn't know, like five mi missing children, one murderer, talking about a bite of 87, how the animatronics can be broken sometimes. That is later down in the line with the sequel, FNAF 2, but we're always focused on one. And that meant rumors were all over the place. Hoaxes, wanna be leaks, but let's get to the first ones all the way. Foxy a good guy. I mean, sure, he's probably a character. I like his design, though. But him being a good guy, it would just be that he just runs the chick on you and you give himself, he gives himself a heart attack. Yeah, just that's how it works. Turns out, no, that step closer is a thing. I mean, I haven't gotten the book yet. But, meh. Now we know it is really is a good guy, though. But one of the most infamous, most famous out of all, don't look at that, that's Doc. Is that <laughs> Sparky the dog. He would normally go in the parts of service room where Bonnie normally is, and he gave himself the bad breath. And he would just be at the door area, which is very much hard to see when you see the rules and the area where Chica is, including Freddy. It will be hard to see, yet you could see it. And turns out, it was false, so it was just a hastily pasted mess. But some people would claim that maybe Fetch the Dog, which is was in Fast Best Frights, maybe was a ba was a use for Sparky. I don't know, it looks like Dana Gold, but still. I mean, the only difference is that Sparky has pointy ears and Sparky has droopy ears like a dog normally does have. But now it comes to the part where everybody lost their mind. By the 87. I really didn't lose their mind though, just saying that people were all the way trying to figure out what the heck of Biden 87 was. Was the fact that maybe an animatronic did? We know that Jinx and Bonnie didn't do it because they don't have freaking jaws. I mean, they do, but it isn't brown enough to actually do it. Also, one reason or another is that Freddy's freaking hand was a weird like, defect. He had a rip in it, and also body was levitating. Weird. But there was three characters of the original game depicted that might have caused the body to summon. Freddy, Foxy, and Golden Freddy. Can't coup Carl, because he's just killed Sonic Boom. Anyways, Freddy will maybe do the fact that the icon of the iOS port you just had handprint and a little smudge around the cheek. Like, you just had... Ah, right there. Let me show you. Right there, had a smudge of a hand. There's a little smudge on the cheek. And many people assume that he might have caused by 87. Foxy, meh, it kinda did. I mean, that would come mangle, though. But, again, we didn't know what the freak of an act 2 was. But then the one that kinda got nearly right was Gordon Freddy. The very fact that there was another skeleton in part service and he's just a hallucination, many people assume that that was the spell end though, and also he might have caused the body of seven. I mean, they were wrong three years though, but still. And also, one of the most two more infamous stuff about FNAF 1 was that real life and real life areas. You see here, there was a little weird thing that happened. That someone hastily missed, and not hastily, just photoshopped the restaurant at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and everybody went trying to look for this place actually. Turned out it was false, and Scott even admitted that he doesn't want to do pizza, like food chains. I mean, with the fact that Turkey Cheese is going bankrupt this year, maybe he will, I don't know. This is his mind, he's got plans. And the other one was from after in real life. That kind of feels connected though, I just want to make it different. People were kind of making FNAF from real life though, having real life animatronic suits, but people were obviously cosplaying them. But some did make real life animatronics, like Mr. Creepypasta. He made scary as ever, except the eyebrows. He didn't look right. But now the animatronics are sold off and we don't know what the heck happened. Just for like the E3 Mario Warrior, the puppet one piece. But in time though, FNAF is a great game, but obviously it does have its flaws. You can't really play it too much though, and if you do, you just get bored and you just put, type in CD+. Who thought that Sonic CD would have been a great idea? <laughs> and so, 
it did spawn a whole entire franchise. It is still trying to get itself a movie. And it may wait a bunch of icons. In fact, FNAF was like one of the things that made me stop this channel. Actually, it was Sonic and FNAF. Weird, I know. But until then, though, yeah, I was trying to do something in this last month, though, but kind of concerning the fact that I was like kind of deaf right between them. But I don't know. Next one probably be the Hello Neighbor 2 video. Act 2. And also, if you want to know what the heck you get FNAF at, it's on a Switch. PC, I, Xbox One, I don't know if it, it is on PS4 though. No, honestly, iOS. But the iOS part it was awful. Screen control, I think. Yeah, it feels like how Super Mario Bros. Deluxe and Super Mario Events 4 Bros. 3 were like the best versions except they had to do a fact that the screen crunch. That feels weird. Like, again, like the Sonic 1 and 2 iOS parts. They're great additions, except they're just on freaking uh, iPhone. I mean, that works, though, but still. And so, bye. Oh, God, this is a long way to go.